Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Biscaglia, and I'm from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And I'm here with author John DeWitt from Indiana University. And we're talking about his recent publication in gastrointestinal endoscopy entitled EUS Guided Ethanol versus Saline Solution Lavage for Pancreatic Cysts, a Randomized Double Blinded Study. Well, glad to have you here, John. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for coming. Um, this is a remarkable study, I think, especially uh, in today's uh, day of pancreatic cysts. And I, I just want to ask you a few questions. The first thing I want to ask is, why did you come up with this study? What was the rationale behind it? And what were your thoughts for, for doing this interesting study? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, mm -hmm. As we all know, uh, physicians who see a lot of patients with pancreatic disease, uh, we're seeing almost an epidemic of, of pancreatic cysts because of the cross-sectional imaging we're using. And uh, pancreatic surgery, uh, which is traditionally offered for patients with, with mucinous cysts, particularly mucinous cyst adenomas, main duct IPMNs, and, mm -hmm. and although more controversial now, branch duct IPMNs, uh, that surgery is associated with uh, rare mortality and, and often significant morbidity. Um, the uh, initial pilot study that was performed by Dr. Berge's group uh, increases in, in ethanol use uh, up to 80% um, was associated with uh, no complications, and a third of those cysts resolved. And that work uh, provided the, uh, the pilot information for the basis of this randomized trial, uh, of which he was the, uh, the author of the protocol and the senior author of the paper. Interesting. So can you summarize to us what, what you found and what your results were? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the study, as you mentioned in the title, was a uh, randomized uh, double-blinded study. Uh, patients with, uh, who were asymptomatic and presented with one to five centimeter cysts uh, were offered either um, saline or ethanol injection. Mm -hmm. Um, most of these patients were high risk for surgery mm -hmm. uh, and didn't want to have it or were not candidates for surgery. And we, uh, under, they underwent a five minute lavage mm -hmm. with ethanol or saline. And then they came back uh, three months later for a unblinded ethanol mm -hmm. lavage. And then they came back after that at three to four months mm -hmm. following the second injection uh, for a CT scan to measure uh, the size of the cyst compared to baseline. And the main endpoints we looked for were, uh, the main endpoint was to look at for the change in size between the first and second lavage, mm -hmm. in other words, to see the change versus of ethanol versus saline. And then other endpoints were um, resolution of cysts at the follow-up CT scan afterwards, um, the pathology of those who underwent surgical resection, and then the, certainly the complications that were occurring with this procedure, mm -hmm. where those were the endpoints we looked at. That's very interesting. Tell me about uh, lavaging pancreatic cysts. I mean, it's not something that we do very often. Uh, usually in practice, we're aspirating them, but we're not putting things back into them. So how is that? Is it technically pretty easy to do? Uh, five minutes, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So what's exactly going on at that time? Sure. Uh, anybody who can FNA assist uh, could mm -hmm. probably perform this procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the basic procedure is uh, after the withdrawal of most of the fluid, we left a little bit of fluid in the cyst uh, remaining mm -hmm. in order to be safe that we were doing this. Then uh, the lavage was an alternating injection and re-aspiration okay. of the injectate. Uh, and that would occur for a five minute period. Mm -hmm. uh, the more viscous the fluid, certainly, the more difficult it would be to withdraw the fluid. So uh, over a five minute period, maybe four or so lavages would occur mm -hmm. uh, for a very viscous uh, cyst, but then for a uh, more thin uh, fluid cyst, then the, the maybe seven or eight would occur. So it was an alternating injection and re-aspiration of that okay. fluid, and then at the end of the uh, lavage, then uh, the cyst was completely collapsed. Did you have any difficulty with uh, smaller cysts, cysts that were, let's say, one to two centimeters that yielded small amounts of fluid, or? Um, the, the smaller cysts, we, again, the, the lowest cyst we would treat was 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, the median size was roughly two centimeters. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main problem with smaller cysts is making sure that your needle's in there. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, smaller cysts in our univariate analysis uh, were close, but not statistically significant as far as uh, uh, resolution of those mm -hmm. cysts. Um, but as far as was there any more technical difficulty in the smaller cysts, uh, actually no. Um, and they could theoretically be easier to treat because more contact with the fluid would get into contact with the wall of the cyst. Interesting. What do you think would be considered a challenge maybe from this study, you know, that, for example, something that the readers might not necessarily know about just from reading the article uh, from front to back? W w can you identify any challenges that you came across? Um, I think uh, one is certainly uh, enrollment. Um, you know, mm. patients are... Uh, uh, when you mention to them, and you have to be honest, that this is still an unproven technique. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a uh, study based on good science, but uh, still unproven, um, that there is a, a, a small but real risk of pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so crewmen was certainly an issue, and the study took uh, over three years to finish. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one. Uh, as far as technical challenges, the, the more mucinous the thicker fluid does present some challenge to try to make it a little more, a little less viscous, so mm -hmm. you can make sure that that turbulent flow does occur. Um, cysts in the unsinate process of the pancreas uh, sure. would be a little bit more difficult to treat because, as you know, they're more difficult to, to stick and, mm -hmm. and aspirate, so certainly those presented uh, more of a challenge. Um, and uh, those were the main uh, limitations we had. Okay. Um, okay. This is a very you know, controversial area with, because, and a good area to investigate simply because, uh, as you know, the, the treatment, the surgical treatment is rather mm -hmm. um, potentially risky with high morbidity in the 40% range mm -hmm. and, and relatively high mortality depending on the center. What do you think is uh, the future of, of non-operative management of pancreatic cysts? Do you see it uh, going anywhere else, different injectates, uh, different studies that need to be done? What do you think? That's a very good question. I think uh, based on our work, um, we've shown that uh, there can be ablation uh, both histologically, uh, radio radiographic confirmation of that. Um, and so I think that this uh, probably works. I think it is because of the issues you mentioned with surgery is worth further investigation. Uh, Dr. O oh from Korea has uh, added paclitaxel, mm -hmm. uh, as, which as you know is a chemotherapy agent uh, in, in a diluted form uh, to this injectate and, and using alcohol and paclitaxel may in his experience offer uh, treatment uh, and, and resolutions of 60 to 70 percent, which were mm -hmm. almost double the ones we achieved in the pilot and, and this uh, randomized trial we're talking about. So, so that to me is very exciting uh, that at perhaps adding more agents mm -hmm. um, would, would increase resolution rates. So certainly uh, varying the concentrations, the uh, injectates, uh, perhaps the needle size, and varying cysts, uh, such as adding more septations, mm -hmm. uh, would be something that could be studied. So I think this is a very exciting field for research and, and um, similar to, uh, to Barrett's esophagus with dysplasia, right. maybe something that we can offer patients that otherwise would have to have a morbid surgery. Right. Any advice uh, for uh, an investigator who is looking to, to perform a similar type or related study? I think uh, even though uh, there are now four, pu four published studies, including this one, on, on this technique, it still is uh, in its uh, early stages of development. So I think if it, an investigator is considering uh, getting into this field that uh, IRB approval is, uh, is required, should be required, and um, an upfront talk with patients that is still investigational um, and uh, is associated with a four to 10% pancreatitis rate like we found in our study. Um, and, uh, but it does offer a potential treatment uh, for these patients. Something else which I did not mention is that uh, in, unless the pancreatitis ever does become severe, which to my knowledge has not been reported with this mm -hmm. technique, patients who do have inadequate resolution or want to eventually have surgery uh, can still be offered that treatment should the patient and the surgeon decide that that right. is the best uh, right. pursuit at that point. Right. Well, great. Thank you for this interesting conversation. I think it's an excellent study and I think it's something that uh, has been much needed. And so I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.